team like Kyrie and KD Or the Lake Show with King James and AD Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s But no black and white, I need that in HD Yeah, dog Yo, what's good y'all? It's your boy and Hen Dog and we back to it. You know how we do it. I got my McDonald's All-American jersey on because today is the today is the day of the McDonald's All-American game. And it's crazy because I feel like I don't know nobody in the McDonald's All-American game right now. If you know some players that's in the McDonald's All-American game right now that's you can definitely say is gonna be in the NBA in the next couple years. Write them in the comments. Let me know. I want to get a little head start on the, the high schoolers that's going to be in the league in the next couple years. So, yeah, put them in the comments for me. I really appreciate that. But I was scrolling on YouTube. Uh, I was about to, I think I was about to do um, Game 5 of the 1984 Finals. Um, if you haven't been checking those out, go ahead and check those out. I'm already in the uh, four games. So, yeah, I got another game going. But in the midst of that, when I was about to react to that, I saw this other video pop up. Uh, by Jimmy High Roller. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't react to some of his videos before. I think he's pretty good. But the caption was, The Harsh Truth About the Goat Debate. And I'm like, ooh, I think that might be a good video. And it had like 700, 800,000 views in like a day. So I'm like, it must be a pretty good video. So I'm like, hey, let's react to it, man. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe right now. Uh, like this video if you like this video. And go ahead and write something in the comments. Uh, yeah, I really have no expectations for this video. Uh, I have no idea who's going to be in this, who it's going to be talking about. But hey, let's get into it. Let's get, let's get straight to it. So the harsh truth about the GOAT debate. Let's get it. LeBron? Hey! It's never gonna end, is it? LeBron's reign over the NBA. I've just come to the conclusion that LeBron has hacked into the Matrix and has transcended aging. LeBron is in his 19th NBA season and is somehow still one of the best players on the planet. This isn't supposed to happen. 99% of NBA players peak in their mid to late 20s and then slowly regress as they age, eventually becoming a liability to their team and inevitably sailing off into the sunset, washed up and content with their achievements. But not LeBron. The man is fighting his age like he's got a grudge on time itself. And the more he piles up on these mind-bending feats, the more we must ask ourselves the question, and I really hate to do this, but is LeBron the greatest basketball player of all time? Let's talk about it. Write in the comments right now. Who's your GOAT? Is it Bron? Is it Jordan? Is it Bird? Is it um, Dr. J? Is it Kobe? Like, let me know. Y'all know who my GOAT is. Kobe is my GOAT. This is this is Kobe. But I think the GOAT is Michael Jordan. I, I've said that before. And I don't I can't throw LeBron in there on for me, but I wanna hear I wanna hear who y'all got. I wanna hear who y'all got. We're gonna we gonna talk more about it. We're gonna talk more about it. And if he isn't, what would he need to do to truly, once and for all, be the GOAT? Is Bron the GOAT? <laughs> About five years ago, I uploaded my first basketball-related video onto this channel. The title of that video is LeBron the Goat. Mm. You can still watch this video today. But since it's an absolute dog water of a production, I highly recommend you steer clear of it. To summarize the video, I gave 10 reasons why LeBron would retire as the Goat. Fast forward five years and thousands of hours of watching games, collecting data, and gathering context in this sport that we love. I've since changed my ways and realized that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Facts. But my original assessment from five years ago hasn't completely changed mm. because I never said LeBron was the GOAT at the time. I just gave 10 reasons why LeBron would retire as the GOAT. But ever since I dropped that video, I've pretty much avoided the GOAT conversation altogether. I I've put a spin on the idea of the greatest players in certain aspects of the game. I've talked about the greatest scores. I've ranked players using purely numbers, but I've never really broken down who the greatest player is, in my opinion, because I just feel like the topic is a bit redundant. And ESPN already gives you a daily update on the GOAT debate anyways, so no need for me to do it. But I think it's time we actually discuss this, because what LeBron is doing at this point in his career is just absurd. At the moment, there are pretty much three different camps on the whole GOAT debate. 
And one thing that I feel like LeBron kind of get a talk down upon, which I don't really understand, is it's the whole thing where it's like LeBron isn't the goat. LeBron can't be the goat. He's just he's just padding his stats. You know, he's only he, his his stats only look good because he's been doing this for twenty years. I'm like, doesn't that make doesn't that isn't that a, a, a good case to make him the goat if he's able to be at this this high level for twenty plus years? Like I get it, I get it. What 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 Jordan did in thirteen years, what Bird did in thirteen years, what Magic did in thirteen years is amazing, and you can't really compare what they did in thirteen years compared to what LeBron did in nineteen years because it's just he got six extra years on them. Like I get that, I get that, but to try to say like try to downplay LeBron's stats because he's been playing longer it doesn't really make sense to me. But let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. Same thing with Kareem. They kind of do the same thing. Like Kareem, you know he. He shouldn't even really be credited as the all-time leading scorer because he played for 20 years. I'm like, yeah, he, yes, he should. That's more of a reason. He was able to play at a high level for 20 years. But let me know what y'all think, man. People who think Michael Jordan is the GOAT, people who think LeBron is the GOAT, and people who are wrong. I'm just joking, of course. But sure. not really. I'd say about 75% of people fall into the MJ's the GOAT category, about 20% of people fall into the LeBron's the GOAT category, and about 5% fall into the other category. Do y'all think that's true? Do y'all think that it's only 5% of the, the basketball world? That's why I, that's why I want y'all to write in the comments right now, because we're going we gonna to kind of change these stats a little bit, these statistics a little bit. I don't know. I say it's more or less probably. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I actually want to see. I, it, might, it might be right. Let me know what y'all think about this pie graph. Is y'all think that's pretty accurate, dude? Twenty percent of the whole basketball world think LeBron is the goat. Let me know. Usually, these other fans believe the goat is Wilt or Kobe or Kareem. There's not many of them, the but Bird Gang. Will they die on that hill? See, the thing here is that a lot of the fans in MJ's corner believe that he hey, is hey, and hey. will forever be the GOAT. But realistically, is there anything LeBron can do to surpass him? I mean, there's got to be some sort of objective metric we can use to distinguish the greatest player of all time. No opinions, no bias, just the facts. facts. If LeBron somehow won four more championships and retired with eight rings, he'd undoubtedly be the GOAT, right? So yeah. there are paths for him to become the greatest ever, but where does that threshold lie and what would LeBron have to achieve to get there? First, let's just take a look at the basic numbers. Between Michael and LeBron, LeBron has more career points, rebounds, assists, blocks. See, this is what we can't really compare right here. I get it as far as this type of stuff. You can't compare one to the other as in like totals because yeah, he's played six extra seasons, so this is what I get. You definitely can't compare these. More triple doubles, higher field goal percentage, and a higher three-point percentage. And Michael has more steals and a higher free throw percentage. But this whole argument, the career totals argument, is only useful in demonstrating LeBron's longevity and sustained excellence. Right. These numbers don't prove that LeBron's a better scorer, or rebounder, or defender, or shooter than Jordan. They just prove that LeBron's been good at these things for a very very long time. Longer period These numbers time. also show just how versatile LeBron is, possibly his most valuable asset. Oh my God. So instead of looking at career totals, let's look at career averages. Average. Michael averages more points exactly. and more steals, and LeBron averages more assists and more rebounds. And as much as it pains me to say this, this is usually where the argument for the GOAT ends for most people. Throw in a required comment about their finals records and you pretty much have a condensed version of most GOAT debates. But there is so much more to unpack here. Right. So let's unpack it. Unpack it then. So y'all know how much I like advanced stats. They don't tell the full story, but if you know which ones to look for, you can discover some nuances in a player's game that you won't get by just watching them play. Before we go into these advanced stats, I want to give y'all a little background on me. I worked in analytics for the last four years before I figured out that I didn't want to do that full time and I wanted to do this full time. But yeah, I was in the, the analytics, the advanced stats world for four plus years. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. You know, it, it paid the bills, but I still think that those those stats is a little overrated, man. It's a little too much that you got to dive into. And especially coming from a player, like I've, I've been playing my whole life. 
So that's another reason why I think personally is a little overrated as far as just diving super deep into those stats. But I don't know. Let's let's see what let's see what he got to say about these advanced stats. Will it help or hurt LeBron's case? I think it might hurt it a little bit though. These six advanced stats give us efficiency, production, value, impact, and pretty much everything in between. And in these six advanced statistics, Michael Jordan exceeds LeBron in five of them. Oh, shit. He's more efficient overall. He contributes to more wins. He contributes to more points. He's better on defense. And he is generally more valuable on the court than LeBron is. The only advanced stat where LeBron tops Jordan is true shooting percentage. Now, in terms of who's a better basketball player, nearly every metric points to Michael Jordan. Mm. But really take a look at these numbers, and it's actually uncanny just how close LeBron is to MJ across the board. Yes, super Just a fraction behind Jordan in pretty much everything. But these numbers aren't even addressing who's greater, because that conversation would involve accolades and accomplishments and impact on the game. Take away the rings, the influence, the intangibles, the opinions, and it's virtually objectively true that Michael was a better basketball player than LeBron. Mm. But the GOAT debate isn't necessarily about who is the better player. It's about who is the greatest player. We've got some more unpacking to do. Michael Jordan, probably. Now, we cannot have a thorough GOAT debate without discussing the accomplishments of each player. Numbers are cool, and they have their purpose, but numbers alone aren't indicative of greatness. They're just a vehicle to greatness. This is why, despite James Harden spending half a decade piling up some of the greatest scoring numbers in NBA history, most people don't consider him greater than some players with far lesser offensive numbers. The numbers complement the accolades, not the other way around. This is also why I consider Wilt Chamberlain to have been a better basketball player than Bill Russell, but Bill Russell was greater than Wilt. Wilt achieved his greatness through his numbers, whereas Russell achieved his greatness by contributing to an unrelenting style of winning basketball. So let's take a look at- What do y'all think? Do y'all think accolades should play a part in the how great a player is? Uh, I mean, I feel like it definitely does, but it's a team sport at the, at the end of the day. Like, and basketball is a team sport. You can't win without a team. So, when you're solely just trying to, you know, ask the question on who's the better player, should team stats and team accolades be involved in that? Let me know. The accomplishments of both Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Now, there are plenty of other awards a player can earn in the NBA, but these are the ones that really stand out on a player's resume. Championships, Finals MVPs, Regular Season MVPs, Defensive Player of the Year, All NBA Selections, and All Defensive Team Selections. Okay, let's see. And amongst these six categories, Jordan beats LeBron in five of them. Mm. And Michael accomplished all of this in just 15 seasons to LeBron's full 18 okay, seasons. 15. The only category where LeBron outperformed Michael is in All NBA Selections. And most will argue that, again, this is an accomplishment of longevity more than anything else. Which, at this this point seems to be the overall theme in the GOAT debate. Up to this point in his career, the majority of fans will agree that LeBron has been a step below Jordan in terms of greatness. So now the race to become the GOAT has become a marathon. Because eventually, the sheer volume of LeBron's career numbers and achievements may become so overwhelming that we'll have no choice but to concede that he is, in fact, the greatest player of all time. Mm. Which brings us to a real dilemma in this age-old debate. So you're saying there's a chance? Is there a chance, y'all? Let me know in the comments, what would LeBron have to do from here moving forward in order for all of us to consider he's the GOAT. Because I feel like for the most part, a lot of y'all don't really like LeBron James. And now I don't say that y'all don't like him, but as far as trying to say he's the GOAT, like it's no it's no chance. Like a lot of people say he's not better than he's not better than Jordan, which I agree. Some people say he's not better than Kobe, which I agree. And some people even say he's not even better than Larry Bird, which I'm kinda on the edge of all. I personally might have to go with Braun over Bird, but it's close. It's close. Bird gang, I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. I, I got to speak what's real, though. Maybe y'all change my mind one day, but I might have to take Braun over Bird right now. As I, How I feel right now, probably Braun. But, yeah, let me know. Is there a chance that he could ever become the GOAT, like, unanimously? Like, everybody is saying Braun the GOAT? I don't think so, but let me know what y'all think. The flame that burns twice as bright 
burns half as long. A great quote by the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu regarding the idea of excellence and the sustainability of it. Almost as if you can have the idea quote? half as long. The flame, the flame that burns twice as burnt. What? The flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. I think that's a, a typo. So I'm gonna let him read it off again. Let's see what he said. The flame that burns twice as bright that. burns half as long. A great quote by the ancient Chinese okay. philosopher Lao Tzu regarding the idea of excellence and the sustainability of it. Almost as if you can have longevity or be exceptional, but you can't have both. Right, now, in the world of basketball and sports in general, usually being exceptional translates to longevity and vice versa. Michael Jordan was excellent for 13 seasons in the NBA. His flame was violently bright and it burned for quite some time. But what if there was a flame that burned about 95% as bright and lasted much, much longer? That's At a, a good certain point. point, the radiance of even the brightest flame is outclassed by the flame that just won't quit. Of course, LeBron isn't a flame. He's a six foot nine inch, 250 pound freak of nature in basketball shoes, but his light shines about 95% as bright as Michael Jordan's did, and it's lasting a whole lot longer. When does the longevity of LeBron's brilliance simply outmatch the slightly greater but much shorter brilliance of Michael? Because as we've discussed, Mike trumps LeBron in pretty much every single metric other than longevity and overall production. So the real question here is how much longer will LeBron have to be excellent before the majority agrees that he is greater than Michael was? The man is in his 19th NBA season That's crazy. and he's leading the NBA in scoring. He's still a top five player in the league and his bag is getting deeper and deeper with every season. Here's a chart of LeBron's total points, assists, and rebound averages throughout each season of his career. Each point on the graph represents the total average of points, assists, and rebounds for every season of his career. So, for example, this season LeBron is putting up 8, 6, and 30 a game, so his total for the season is 44. LeBron's total production has exceeded 40 in 17 different seasons. Now here's Michael's total average points, assists, and rebounds for every season of his career. This is by far the greatest argument in favor of LeBron in wow. the GOAT debate. The man has simply sustained excellence for longer than Mike did. And although the numbers are just a vehicle to greatness, there has got to be a point where the numbers are just too glaring to ignore. LeBron's numbers are getting to that point. But some fans will argue that there were other players that were still really good this late in their career. You mean like Kareem, or Kobe, or Karl Malone? They weren't even close. LeBron's already the only player to be a part of the 30K, 10K, 10K club. Aside from a freak injury, he'll undoubtedly break Kareem's scoring record. He'll probably play the most seasons in an NBA career. He already has the record for most All-NBA selections, and he's still adding to what is probably the longest career highlight reel with moments like this. Yeah, if LeBron so is, is, is the numbers overrated, y'all? Because if you look at that, and you know, it's, it says that he has more all NBAs than anybody. He has more, he's gonna have way more points than Kareem, way more points than anybody else. But there's still a lot of doubt in him being the GOAT. So are we saying that the stats are overrated? Like what what are what are we really saying? If we're not gonna just give give LeBron the GOAT, the GOAT title? Let me know in the comments. LeBron is still doing this in a couple years while still putting up all NBA numbers. I really think it's going to be difficult to say that he's not the greatest player ever. You know what? I'm just going to say it. While LeBron's legacy is growing as he plays more seasons, Michael's legacy would have been slightly diminished if he played more seasons. Of course, this isn't a matter of fact, but all the evidence points towards this assumption. Michael Jordan retiring after playing just 13 NBA seasons in 1998 was the best thing he could have ever done for his legacy. The Bulls were not going to win another championship, and the backbone of the dynasty he had built had all but vanished by the beginning of the 1999 season. How old was Jordan? when he retired that second time. After he hit the, the shot against um, Byron Russell, how old was he right then? Let me know. 
If he had played through that three-year retirement gap from 1999 to 2001, he would have either stayed with the Bulls and put up huge numbers on a losing team, or signed with a different team and chased rings. Both options being far less illustrious than him going out on top with the team that drafted him. That's true. Michael's career was the perfect storm. He was drafted by a franchise that was ready and willing to build around him. He was on a roster that suited his skill sets extremely well, and he and the Bulls peaked right as the dominant teams from the 80s and early 90s like the Lakers, Celtics, and Pistons began to fade away. You could not have written a better career if you tried. On the other hand, despite his success, LeBron really got the short end of the deal many times throughout his career. He spent his first seven seasons in the NBA playing for a team that could not have cared less about building a coherent team around him. He spent four straight finals going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most dominant dynasty in modern NBA history outside of Jordan's Bulls. While Michael was hey, hey, by players who were all Hey, he better relax. He better not just talk not talk about the Lakers dynasty like that. I don't know. What y'all think about that? Him just ignoring the Lakers dynasty talk about the Bulls and the Warriors. I don't know, bro. All willing to buy into their system, LeBron has spent many years carrying the load of bad rosters and seemingly incompetent teammates. Part of which is his own fault for trying to play GM and putting together piss poor rosters. And I bring up these small nuances because the GOAT debate is very nuanced. As much as people want to act like the whole 6-0 in the finals is the end all be all to the discussion, it's just not. If rings were all that mattered, then Bill Russell would be the GOAT. Oh, but he played a long time ago. That doesn't count. Okay, well then Robert Ori is the GOAT because he has seven rings to Jordan's six. Well, yeah, yeah. but Ori wasn't the best player on any of those championships. Okay, so is the argument about rings or is it about being the best player on the court or a mixture of both? Is a player's performance, despite how masterful it was, all in vain if his team loses? The line becomes less and less clear the deeper you dig. No single metric can be used to determine this debate. And the unpacking of every small minute detail is a necessary burden. But unfortunately, it's a burden that most fans won't bother to take on. The not so undisputed GOAT. At the moment, I personally believe Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. I also think he's the best basketball player of all time. But. Unlike some fans, I don't think the door has closed on LeBron. I think that if LeBron can continue to dominate the league for a few more seasons and continue to shatter our previous notions of what we thought was possible in a single NBA career, I think that he has a chance to retire as the greatest player of all time. But of course, only time will tell. And fortunately for LeBron, time seems to perpetually be on his side. <laughs> Always say that Father Time has one loss. Father Time is a million and one, and that one loss is to LeBron James. I swear. But I hope y'all enjoyed that video. I definitely did. Um, that's not what I really expected from that video. I I really had no expectations. I thought it was gonna just be a bunch of different players where they was gonna be debating, but it was just between LeBron and, and Jordan. But like I said, I know a lot of y'all on the channels right now isn't that fond of LeBron. I, I don't see a lot of good stuff talked about uh, with LeBron, but hopefully my videos is coming up in the future to change that. Cause like I said, I'm about to go through a whole bunch of LeBron videos. I still got to do his making the case uh, video. Uh, I still got a bunch of other stuff I'm gonna go through, but definitely that one. But I want to say, I think my top three players, all, I'm gonna say my top five players all the time. I got to go uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, my fourth is, I got want to say Magic, and then my fifth is Bird, but it might change. But I appreciate y'all again, man. Let me know who y'all top five players of all time is. But make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if y'all haven't already. I'll definitely appreciate that. Uh, make sure y'all like this video if y'all like this video. And go ahead and write y'all stuff in the comments. Y'all do a great job of writing, writing in the comments, man. I really appreciate it. I try to, you know, talk back as much as I can without... Uh, feeling like I'm looking at my phone all day, but I'm enjoying all of this, man. So I hope y'all is too. But stay tuned for more videos. They they on the way. They on the way. But I appreciate y'all like always. We out.